thank you. As always, it is good to be with young people. Please, let's take our seats. And I don't know whether these people are not going to block the other people from, from actually witnessing. However, Madam Jefferson of the program, my brother is the General of Police, Mr. Maidamu, and I have two brothers and friends, Blue Weaver, and my own dear coach and friend, Madam Sawale. Professors from the university, directors and staff of the Anti-Corruption Commission, eminent young gentlemen and ladies, I see my brother Commander, distinguished guests that are coming from Africa, our brothers and sisters from Liberia, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of Makeni, I greet you all. It is with a distinct honor that I'm here to speak to you as young people. And uh, permit me to speak. Do you hear me? Yes. If I put the mic down, you still hear me, not so? Yes. No, you don't? Yes. I will speak on a topic retracing the Sankara dream. The role of youth in achieving the SDGs. Thomas Sankara was a great man. Africa had an opportunity in such a man who came to power in 1983 in Burkina Faso. He drastically re reduced the expenses of the state. He had zero tolerance for corruption. He drove low-end cars as head of state and he empowered women. He was one of those who started the revolution for women in Africa to have equal seat on the table as men. He believed in youth. He made exercise. Exercise a national agenda for everybody to go and jog at least two times a week in Burkina Faso to promote good health. Thomas Sankara changed the story of Burkina Faso within six years. He had a dream. And the dream was easy for Africa to be self-reliant and to be able to take care of itself without needing aid, without needing support. And he wanted to build that by ensuring that there is alimentary sufficiency. We can feed ourselves. We can build our own schools. We can provide water to drink. We can take care of ourselves without being corrupt. And his zero tolerance of corruption was so heavy that nobody will remain in his government when corruption has been associated with you. That was Thomas Sankara. However, Thomas Sankara died in 1987. He was killed. Between 1983 and 1987, he changed a lot. He reduced the debt of Burkina Faso, which he met at about 360 billion to almost zero, relying on local productivity only. That was the dream of Sankara for Africa. And it was a dream of a young man in his 30s. It was a dream to change his country for good, using his own population. Because he knew that Africa will not change if we have to beg for precious little every time. Therefore, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the revolutionary program of Thomas Sankara died at that time. And when he died, Burkina Faso went back to being a normal country where they were advertising poverty again. Burkina Faso was spreading corruption, the expenses of the state again increased, women were marginalized. In fact, because it was an Islamic state, he made it that. He was the first man who said, when a woman needs to divorce a man, you do not need the man's consent. You can divorce him. 
and he himself was in a predominantly Islamic state. That was the man. But this man was killed by his own friends, his own brothers, people who he ate and slept with. So I have taken the time to remind you of such a great man today as you young people from across Africa have come here. For you to know that there are people who have always dreamed for Africa not to be as it is. But most times, they die with their dreams. Burkina Faso would not have returned to where it was had there been 350 Sankaras in Burkina Faso. So as young people, I am bringing you the message of Thomas Sankara so that we can produce a critical mass of Sankaras in Africa. Of young people who understand that the change that we want and yearn and preach for rests in us. It is not in one man. Have there been multiple Sankaras in Burkina Faso? The day they killed him on the 15th of October 1987, Burkina Faso was not going to go back to being a normal country in Africa. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about youth. Africa is potentially the richest continent in the world. Yet, in Africa, it seems we continue to do the same. We are known for the production of raw materials, not so. When are we going to enjoy the finished product by ourselves? We produce cocoa, but we buy chocolate expensive. Our young people, are not engaging themselves the way they should to ensure that there is self-sufficiency in Africa. One third of Africa's nearly 420 million youth are aged between the age of 15 and 35. One third of the population of Africa are aged between the age of 15 and 35. But let me tell you something. One third of them are unemployed. No job. According to the African Development Bank. With regards to employability, according to the African Development Bank report, by 2050, Africa will be home to 38 out of 40 youngest countries in the world. So out of 40 countries you take in the world, 38 of them will be the youngest and they will be in Africa. This will result in an estimated 10 to 20 million new people joining the labor force each year. 10 to 12 million people, young people, are going to graduate from universities and join the labor force in Africa every year. Currently, less than 10% of African students are enrolled in higher education. So when we all go to school, you know, primary school, secondary school, we are supposed to live there and go to university, not so. In Africa, less than 10% make it to university. And those that pursue post-basic education, those that actually pursue post-basic education, those who enter into tertiary education, less than 30% major in medical sciences, Medicare, information and communication technology, and engineering, less than 10%. So already 10% don't make it to university. So of the less than 10% who don't make it to university, less than 10% major in these key things that are the drivers of the 21st century, science, medical care, information, and communication technology, and engineering. So, according to the African Economic Outlook 2017, Africa's growing population is expected to generate a rise in consumer spending by 680 billion in 2008 and 202 trillion in 2030. The growth in Africa's population and increase in spending presents a huge opportunity for entrepreneurship. This morning I am calling 
presents an opportunity for all of us to be business people, to think, develop ideas that will make us rich. As many as 60% of 18 to 34 year olds on the continent who took part in a joint study by the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor and Youth Business International were optimistic about the availability of good business and opportunities and believed they had the skills and knowledge to start business. In Africa, we are the most optimistic, optimistic people. But the opportunities are not there. If you do not empower yourself, how are you going to tap into that $2.2 trillion dollars? in 2030 when all of you are going to be adults by then i will in fact by then my hair will be white 2030. so the reason why i am giving you these statistics as young people because we don't like statistics but i know for sure that every human being likes what they can measure it is for you to create a picture in your mind of what you lose if you do not pursue the Sankara dream. If each of you live here, those who came from other countries go back to your country and you, know, you are not injected with the spirit of Thomas Sankara. In Sierra Leone, young people are used by politicians as my brothers eloquently said. They are politicians, I am not. So I have to quote them. They said, that the politicians use the youth, not so. If a, if a youth is engaged in developing himself in medical science, medical care, information technology, communications technology, and engineering with a politician, use him. But when only 10% of those are making it there anyway, it means we have 90% that can be used. Do we understand? And those 90% are therefore in the majority. That is the sad reality we have. All of you who are here, I see people in uniforms. It makes me remember my days as a schoolboy, and I love to see it. But we have to speak to our political leaders to invest in what is the future. ICT. ICT. Information technology is the way. Just now we are trying to speak to somebody in India, not so. The man is sitting down comfortably in his office. He has spent two hours waiting for us. And then we say, okay, now you can speak. And we can only see his mouth move, we cannot hear him. <laughs> because we have technology deficit. You young people should understand this. And it is an opportunity for you. It is a market for you to capture. And ICT is the future. If we are going to attain the Sankara dream within the framework of the SDGs. Our educational institutions must include entrepreneurship as a mandatory subject. At all levels of education, more young people will be better equipped to create jobs and address the issues of high unemployment. Because where there are more entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs employ more people, not so. Even now, there are so many CEOs, see young people. Many people call themselves CEOs. They have people who they employ. At least they pay them minimum wage, 500,000, 600,000. Not so. If we have more CEOs in Sierra Leone, all the good, the more the merrier. When considering a digital future of Africa, we cannot ignore technology's potential in agriculture. Agriculture. Look at our lands, they are wasting. Because we are using our mothers and grandmothers to go and spend the whole day to plow one acre. But if we use technology, they can plow 200 acres in a day. We have an opportunity we should have to choose if we have to attain the Sankara dream. And the Sankara dream was simple and easy. Self-sufficiency, self-reliance, cooperation, not dependency. We can cooperate with the white man, we can cooperate with Europe, we can cooperate with India, 
But what is bad if we have to depend on them? So if today Malaysia says we are not importing rice to Sierra Leone, nobody eats rice in Sierra Leone. Is that right? Can't we feel ashamed of ourselves? That was the Sankara dream that was betrayed in 1987 when he was shot and killed. Africa is home to over 1.2 billion people. Over 60% of its population fall under the age of 25. 1.2 billion people, 60% are below the age of 25. And if 60% is in that bracket, it means that that population is the most productive. Certainly, we all want to attain the SDGs. We want to move forward as a continent. But we cannot do so if we do not tackle one thing which everybody knows is our biggest problem. And what is it? What is it? Corruption. Corruption is the most terrible thing to the Sankara dream. Corruption puts the individual above the collective interest. It enriches one man against every other person. It will make the roads in the city to be damaged while the man lives as a king. It makes our young people not to have opportunities to be trained in ICT technology because the schools don't even have laboratories and equipment. It destroys the fabric of the nation. And as young people, if we are going to realize the Sankara dream for Africa, you have to understand that the fight against corruption is the most urgent thing for Africa. If we are going to attain the SDGs, we have to fight corruption like our lives depend on it. Because our lives actually depend on it. When the SDGs talk about rule of law, access to justice, all these things that they call equality, water, sanitation, energy, urbanization, environment and social justice. When the NCG talks about attaining all these things, there is one thing that is there to make sure that it can never be attained. There is one thing that has always challenged the Sankara dream for Africa, and it is corruption. Therefore, young people, in order to get you to become and remain engaged in anti-corruption initiatives, you used to engage in serious advocacy for young people to be included as stakeholders in national state governance, including anti-corruption policy development and implementation. You young people have to occupy a seat at the table. Do not wait for invitation. If you are going to demonstrate, demonstrate because you want to sit on that table. Don't demonstrate because you want to protect one corrupt man. Don't stand in the way because a man who has gotten fat on the spoils of the country is being asked questions for his time. You should demonstrate because you do not have a seat on the table, because you do not have food to eat, because your schools do not have proper equipment, because the resources that are to make you the 365 Sankaras that Burkina Faso needed is not available. Within the Sankara dream, the main objective or goals of youth should be the advancement of the role of youth in national development along the following objectives. Anti-corruption policy making and improving youth capacity to unveil and oppose corruption. Anti-corruption education and fight against corruption. The protection of youth whistleblowers, civil society organizations, and youth associations. The protection and advancement of public officials who are youth. You have to organize yourselves. The women are saying they want 30% quota 
Why can't the young people too say we too want 30% quota? Why? But we are ready to run after old men to go to parliament and we have a 90% quota for them. Even the women are not getting the 30%. You young people have to continue the Sankara dream. In the next decade, we expect youth in all countries to influence policy making aimed at improving youth capacity in order to unveil and oppose corruption at all levels in Africa. It does not matter. It's not just Sierra Leone. Liberia, when your people go back, tell your president that young people oppose corruption in Liberia. We will stand with you and we will support you. <laughs> to support initiatives that encourage the participation of young people in integrity activities across Africa, through youth integrity camps and training programs on anti corruption policies and issues, to involve relevant youth organizations and representatives in framing and implementation of policies pertaining to the field where youth are active, in particular, politics, education, sports, and media. Those are the places where youth are most active, anywhere in the world. I'll repeat them again. Politics, education, sports, and media. You have to make sure you have a seat on the table there. To uphold youth organizations, initiatives, and actions in particular, through targeted support to selected youth, youth projects. You should, you should support yourselves and emphasize the ones that are important over the unimportant ones. To set up national networks where young people can share their experiences and knowledge about good governance and leadership, disseminate good practices and advice or devise proposals for future action makes yourself useful in that regard. To foster the approach that quality education would only be achieved and corruption effectively addressed if all relevant sectors of society commit fully to the fundamental positive ethical, ethical principle for public and professional life, rather than relying only upon top-down mechanistic regulatory measures. To engage youth in strategy to fight education fraud and with the help of relevant stakeholders. To involve young people as anti-corruption crusaders. There are many of you who I know. Solomon is here. My brother Commander is here. These people are anti-corruption crusaders. I don't have to call them to say, Commander, do this. I wake up in the morning and I see on social media they have already gone to town with the issue. How many of you do that? But you have to understand that young people are the greatest beneficiaries of the Sankara dream. Because if things are good in the country and all things are equal, you will live longest in that country to enjoy it. You will not die before your grandfather. It's not possible. So if your grandfather has messed up, good for him. If you fix it now, you have another 60 years to live, good for you. We have to work together as Africans. We have to understand that no one is going to come to fix things for us. We have to take up the challenge ourselves. We have to drop all those old ways that have held us. Regionalism, tribalism, the politics of cronyism. We have to drop them. As a new generation of politicians, entrepreneurs, civil society actors, the youth of Africa must have an important role to play in bringing a new culture of integrity to all levels of society. Young people need to be bold, confident, and relentless in their pursuit of excellence. You are the present and the future. You have what it takes to shape the narrative and set the agenda. You should strive to be more aware and use your powerful platforms to claim seats at the decision-making table. You do not have to wait for precious invitation. 
You should hold your leaders accountable for their leadership and democratic governance credentials. Young people must drive the change that Africa needs so badly with the Sankara dream. As I now conclude, young people of Africa, all of you, some have come from far, some are watching us from far. And you sitting down here, including those who are our mentors, who may not be so young now, but have been there with us and are here to share with us today. My advice to you, the youth, is that you should understand that youth is not a permanent stage in life. I will repeat this very slowly, so you hear very clearly. Youth is not a permanent stage in life. It is transient. It is sometimes even ephemeral. However, it is a time when you can do many things and achieve a lot without pressure. I repeat again very slowly. It is the time when you can do many things and achieve a lot without pressure. Take advantage of that period in your lives and accumulate as much terms of education, achievement, and plans as you can. That time when you call yourself young, please take good advantage of it. The years after youth go faster, with enormous pressure from many things, including babies and wives and husbands, you can no longer speak as I am, you speak as we are. These years put a lot of pressure on you. Young people of Africa, I want you all to take every day as a gift. To achieve more from life. Strive to make a difference while you are strongest under less pressure from the demands of life lest it may be too little, too late, not too long from now. You can all, all of you here, can retrace the Sankara dream and help Africa locally move forward with the sustainable and self-reliance that the SDG requires. Because the SDGs that we hope to have achieved are not new. It has always been there, and there was a man who understood it, but he did not live long. It is only when you live here believing that he continued living in all of you and go back to change your society, go back to change your countries, that we can truly, truly, meaningfully achieve the SDGs. Long live, long live the Sankara dream. Long live Africa. I thank you all.